made the council lot of shit. Absolutely. <laughs> can, I, is there, can I film you guys? Yeah, that's fine. I'm surround, I've been surrounded right. by a bunch of illegal photon collectors. <laughs> to collect photons is the official <laughs> photon collection man straight to gulag straight to gulag straight to gulag <laughs> <laughs>
my down from Liverpool. I've got stage 3 cancer. I've just had 22 days of radiotherapy, so I'm being blasted with radiation. Now why have I got this fucking cancer, you may ask? Because of COVID-19 and because of late diagnosis. Even though I was under a hospital and under a specialist for six months, it took them six fucking months to diagnose me. Six months in the hospital because of COVID-19. So now I've got stage C cancer, probably not stage four. Right? I don't want to die. You're not going to miss. Do you understand me? I'm 66 now, and I'm as scared of dying now as when I was 26. But let me tell you this, this has happened to me because of COVID-19 and because the health secretary, is his name Dominic Cummings, I can't remember, he closed the health service down and overreacted and built hospitals all around the country, one here in Manchester as well, that were never ever used. 60,000 cancer patients are going to die this year and next year because of late diagnosis. 60,000 fucking people and it'll be more. That's more than the coronavirus because we all know 50, 60,000 haven't died with the coronavirus. The police are just, in, not the police, the government are inflating the figures. What I want to say to you people here today, or the ones who can hear me, remember this. My doctor's a fucking psychopath, you know my doctor. She didn't fast track me. Have you ever heard of the words being fast track? When you get sent to a specialist, you've got cancer, they fast track you, do you understand me? So it only takes two weeks, not six months, two weeks. Right? So, if any of your family or any of you or any one of you end up and your doctor sends you to see a specialist because there's a sneaking suspicion you may have cancer, even just a little suspicion, you get fast track. Do you understand that? So can you pronounce those words after me? Fast track! Those bastards won't tell you in the NHS because they want to save money and they don't care whether you live or die anyway. Especially pensioners like me. They want to wipe us out. Do you understand me? The NHS now is like a killing machine of pensioners and the, and the nursing homes where they are as well. I have just as much right to live if I'm a fucking pensioner. I have just as much right to be here. Do you understand me? I've only just become a pensioner, you know, about six months ago. I get the state pension. But this message is to all older people. Stop taking their bullshit! These people aren't normal people who are new with us. They're psychopaths, do you understand that? Narcissists! The cabinet, we've got 25 people sitting on the cabinet with a psychopathic prime minister. Boris Johnson's sitting on a cabinet telling the 67 million people what to do. You know, 25 people. It's all a load of bullshit. Now, I don't normally swear, but you know why I'm swearing? I should have only had ten stage two cancer. I wouldn't have needed an operation if I hadn't waited six months. I wouldn't have needed an operation. You probably would have should have been chemotherapy. But the thing is, in February, I face a massive operation, a six-hour operation. But it's great to see you. Thanks anyway, everyone. system problem but here we are. Um, first and foremost, thank you everybody for turning up. This is beautiful. This is truly what humanity is about. All walks of life, our young, our elders, all religions, everybody coming together under one common goal. Freedom! 
so I said that we want to make this a little bit more impactful with a clear, concise message to our supposed, and I do mean supposed, elected leaders, our supposed representatives that we voted in, that are clearly not representing us. And I want to do an exercise now to clearly demonstrate that. So, play along with me, have your phones out and record this, and when you post it on your social media channels, I would please ask you to tag your relative local MPs, Andy Burnham and such like, wherever you're from, okay? So I'm going to ask some questions. It's very simple, because our government clearly doesn't have a clue what we want. They clearly don't represent us. So I'm going to do my own market research with you guys now, because we have got the broadest spectrum of humanity here, representing humanity. So, it's very simple, I'll give a bit of a description, and I will ask if you support it, cheer. If you don't support it, we boo. It's as simple as that. First question, it's very clear to me, and I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but it seems very clear to me, that if the masks worked, why would we be keep going into lockdown after lockdown? I'm not going to put words in people's mouths and suggest that it's virtue signaling. I'm not going to put words in people's mouths and suggest it's a way of imprisoning and enslaving people. But I genuinely want to hear what you've got to say so our representatives can hear what we think. So, for all of those who are in support of masks, cheer now. Wait, who doesn't support the masks? This is very useful market research. We'll move on to the next question. The lockdown. We're in our, I don't even know what lockdown this is anymore. It's a different version of a lockdown in tears. But the lockdowns don't seem to be working either. And many terms like super spreaders have been used. Where was the spike of this supposed super spreader after BLM? Where was it? Where was the spike after our last gathering? Where was it? It, the science and data, backs this up. If you are asymptomatic, and they use language like this, asymptomatic, what does that really mean? What it really means, if you don't have at least two pre-health conditions, diabetes, asthma, whatever, uh, coronary heart disease, whatever, Basically, all of us, 99.7 of us that don't have these health conditions, we cannot transmit or pass on the disease and the science and data backs it. So the lockdowns on that premise do not make sense. So I ask you for the market research. So our representatives can understand because they're meant to be representing us. Do you agree with the lockdown? If you do, cheer now. If you oppose the lockdown, boo now. That's pretty conclusive. My next question. The media is meant to represent. It's meant to be unbiased. It's meant to not have its own agenda. And in my personal view, the BBC and Manchester Evening News, so let's tag them as well. If you think they represent the people, if you think they are unbiased, if you think they are genuinely not trying to cause fear, so we all accept the vaccine, cheer now. If you think they're as corrupted as our government, boo now. Conclusive again.
we're going to have a speaker in a moment speak about the vaccine, but I, I want your view on it before they speak because we're all intelligent people. We all have governance over our own human free will. The vaccine, there's a lot of information about the vaccine. Now we all stand here together, united, to stand for everybody who can choose. So if they want to choose to take the vaccine, then let them. But if we don't want to, we make sure that our government hears us, hears us in saying that we will not accept any mandate vaccination and we will and I will, I promise you, I'm going to chase down Andy Burnham. They need to be putting in legislation that any company that tries to force coercion, which is basically blackmailing, stripping us of our freedoms, so we have the vaccine. That's where this is going. And we may need to make sure that doesn't happen. So, cheer if you are going to take the vaccine. Pin drop. Boo if you say no to the vaccine. We're pretty conclusive, okay. Funnily enough, I think we're all singing from the song sheet, same song sheet here. Next question. And this one, make sure you tag him. Make sure you tag this man. There is an individual that has a big platform and I would love, I would love for him to invite me on his show. I would love for him to call me a COVID idiot to my face. I would love for him to try and tell me I'm an idiot for not accepting a vaccine that not only hasn't gone through the rigorous trials, not only has one of the gold standards for vaccines being passed to be tested on animals, and this hasn't. Essentially, all those that take the vaccines are the guinea pigs. And we have Piers Morgan. Piers, what do we think of Piers Morgan? Now, I would love Piers Morgan to invite me on his show. So, Piers, if you're listening, Rather than line up all those politicians that are spineless, that are all singing the same tune, that are bought out, why don't you get somebody on the show that can actually answer your questions and in fact ask you some questions to see what you're made of. So, this is a little bit different. If you want me to be on with Piers Morgan, cheer now. on your show. Okay, next question. Nearly done. Let's let let's let's assess our government's done. Let's assess our government's done. Jesus! We are the people. The government is meant to represent the people. If you think government's done a great job of representing the people, let's not talk about the 300 plus that all signed in favour of a second lockdown. And what I will say is, from my own personal viewpoint, is every single politician, and I hope you've all made notes like I have, because trust me, with all you people behind me, if I do get a seat at the table, I will be calling out every single one of those 300 politicians. For me personally, the politicians that oppose the second lockdown are the ones that are truly representing the people. So let's cheer for those politicians now. So, I ask you, cheer if you think government's done a great job for us. Pin drop again. Boo if you think they've done a horrendous job for us. Final question, because we're in Manchester, and I know we've got everybody here. We've got Cumbrians, we've got the Scousers. Governors. Oh, let's do some cheers. Scousers, big cheer now. Cumbrians, cheer now. Come on, Cumbrians. Manchester. 
Mr. Chino! The North Chino! Sir Andy Burnham! I suppose it's King of the North! Does Andy Burnham truly represent the people? Cheer now! Has Andy Burnham sold us out? Boo now! If you think I should take his job, cheer now! Okay, thank you. What I'm going to do now... Okay, I've been asked, just so we don't get harassed, and just so we don't get closed down, just to space out a little bit, okay? Just play ball, just play ball, just play ball. I know, I know, I know. Space out a little bit, that's all. Makes it look like we've got more numbers anyway. Okay, i got a very, very, very special guest, a special performance for us to lift the spirits, but to truly show what we're about, which is community, Unity and strength in numbers. Welcome, applause to Alex. So I'm going to play a few songs today, and the first song I'm going to start off with is a song that I wrote during lockdown. And uh, I was tired of lockdown, and because uh, I couldn't go out or anything, so I wrote it, and I really hope you all enjoy. It's called Things Just Come and Go.
I'm going to do one more song to end it off. Uh, Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Yeah. about 
evoke the echoes of history. Today, not today, three years ago, I was watching Jeremy Corbyn speaking in Glastonbury, and he quoted Percy Shelley's remarks after Peterloo. He said, arise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number throw off your chains like dew which in sleep fell on you we are many then but i don't want to just go back 200 years to look at history i want to go back 2000 years as well and there we read something very important in respect of the last six months. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. This government can avoid one of two charges. They can either avoid the charge that they are murderous, or, or they can avoid the charge that they are completely incompetent. But they cannot avoid both charges. The good, news, the good news today is that in a survey of the British people, 57% say the government has done a lousy job no since March. 57%. 50% say we've been internationally humiliated. How can you send no PPE to the nursing homes in April, no vitamin D, no vitamin C, no selenium, but salute a woman, a woman called Frances Kelsey. In 1959, Frances Kelsey said no to the drug thalidomide. She'd been sent the data from Germany and she said to the Food and Drugs Administration, this data is insufficient. And four years later, President John Kennedy gave her the Freedom Medal and thanked her for stopping thousands of American babies being born with no arms and legs. What we've seen on the virus media, they're the viruses, the mainstream media and the mainstream politicians. What we've seen this week has not been science, it's been a thing called scientism. When you go home tonight, if you don't know what scientism is, just Google it, just look at the wiki page on scientism. We've had science, science by press release. There's no data on iatrogenic shock. They haven't bothered to check if the virus, if the vaccine is going to interact with other things in your body. Nobody's bothered to check. How is it possible that we're allowing this to happen? How is it possible? But I, I want to be careful, because I've been reading all all the documents from Italy and France and I know that Italy and France are ahead of us in the destruction of democracy. Let me just share two things with you before I talk carefully about the vaccine. In France, the parliament has been disbanded. President Macron and the head of the army and the head of their MI6 and the head of their MI5 and four other people, the eight of them are sitting in a council and they make all the decisions now. Democracy in France is dead. And in Italy yesterday, in Italy yesterday, the Prime Minister announced that no one can travel between towns for Christmas. One of the most religious countries in the world historically, no one's allowed to travel from town to town for Christmas. It's coming here soon. It's, and if Boris starts to lose his majority in the Commons, there's already 55 unhappy, next week it might be 70, after Christmas it might be 90. But if he starts to lose his majority, he will want to recuse Parliament again. He will want to do what Charles I did. He will want to send them home so he and his dictators can get on with ruining your lives. Imagine a, a science fiction novel. I've talked a little bit about the past and um, 1819 and 1959. But imagine a science fiction novel in which there's a company called Fizzer. Ooh. And Fizzer are sending these massive trucks from a country called Belgium 
and those trucks are coming down the motorway. We weren't quite in time to get saved by Brexit. Would have been nice to see them at the Channel Tunnel for a few weeks. But no, they've come through and they've been green lighted. And what special privileges have FISA managed to get from the government? Number one, total indemnity. Anyone who's damaged by FISA's vaccine, you've got no recourse. You can't sue FISA. of my futuristic novel there's a meeting and the meeting happened yesterday and it was 15 of the regional pharmacy regulatory managers and while they were being spoken to from London 15 of them were nodding like nodding dogs oh yeah the vaccine oh wonderful oh the vaccine oh yeah and then when London dropped the line and they were just left on the road 13 of them said I'm not taking that why should you take what the pharmacy people won't take? We've got to say, what have we got to say? We've got to say no! Elon Musk, Elon Musk, who is a clever, clever man, he's almost as rich as Jeff Bezos. Where's all the money got from the high street? Oh, Jeff's got it. Elon Musk said last week on the internet, he said, you know, with messenger RNA, you can do almost anything. You could turn someone into a butterfly. You could reverse aging. How do we know which particular messenger RNA is going to be in batches one, two, three, four, five, six? Two days ago, I read on the uh, mainstream media that the first people taking the vaccine out of Belgium were going to be our frontline consultants, our doctors and our top nurses. And then as it came over the border into England, someone said, oh, no, 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 let's not do that. Let's not, let's not give it to the consultant medics. Let's take it to the nursing homes. We've already had a good run of death in the nursing homes in March and April and May. Let's give them another shot. Messenger RNA technology is incredibly dangerous. Now, in my science fiction novel, let me tell you what happens next. I tried to get FISA to produce a cartoon documentary explaining how their messenger RNA goes into cells. And I want to know what it does to DNA in the nucleus, but they won't tell me. And I want to know what it does in the mitochondria, but they won't tell me. I'm begging them to tell me some of the facts about FISA's vaccine. They don't know, we don't know. You can't give fully informed consent. Fully informed consent means that you've got all the information. No one in the world has got this information. What would Francis Kelsey do at the FDA? She would say no. And because she said no, babies would be born with their arms and legs. Three, three roads diverge in a wood from here. One of those, one of those roads is that we, the human race, care about all our brothers and sisters. That's one of the roads. Do we take that road? Yes! two roads, the other two roads are despicable, but let me tell you what I think they are in my sci-fi novel. One of the roads is that we destroy the food chains and the economies of the world and we get the population down by at least seven eighths or nine tenths and we do that by starving the whole world. That's one possible future. Do we take that road? But this is the one, this is the one they might try. You could put a sequence into the messenger RNA. Once everyone's being vaccinated, I'm not saying it'll be in batch one. Batch one might be full of water, so there's no adverse reaction. So we're all lulled into a false sense of security. But sometime in the future, in my sci-fi novel, they put messenger RNA sequences into the vaccine, gets delivered to the neck of the sperm, and in the neck of the sperm, there's little energy generators called mitochondria and this stuff snips them and after that everyone is infertile do we go down that road do I go down? let me just say something about the problem I, I said earlier we're in better shape democratically than france and italy but we're not really because we've got a one-party state keir starmer what a joke who thinks keir starmer's a joke he used to be the director of public prosecutions talk about gamekeeper turned poacher now we're supposed to believe Keir is on our side well let me remind you what he did last week on lockdown he told his members of parliament not to vote against Boris pathetic 
I used to think, I used to think Tony Blair, I used to think Tony Blair was a bit of a blue ridge. I used to think he was a bit right wing. But compared to Keir Starmer, he was a Marxist. He should be in jail. Next, next week, Keir, next week, Keir Starmer is not going to vote against Boris's Brexit entry plan. And on the 15th of October, just listen to this, Keir Starmer caused his MPs not to vote against the Spy Cops bill. And I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this. According to the Spy Cops legislation, an undercover police officer or an MI6 agent can get someone pregnant, get married, and if necessary, beat someone to death to make sure their cover isn't flowing. Check it on the internet. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you anything you can't read on the internet. Let me bring things to a close. And let me finish where I started. Isn't it a bit unfair? Isn't it a bit unfair that I've mentioned the police and the cavalry in 1819? Well, actually, no, because if I go back three weeks, my friends and I, with prams and dogs and bad banners like yours, we walked down the prom in Morecambe, and we set off on that journey as Eric Morecambe, happy and enthusiastic. And we were met by policemen on massive horses, riot vans. My friends were thrown around the promenade like rag dolls. One of my friends was thrown into the back of a wagon by her hair. And last week in London, last week in London, my friends and my friends' friends were battered black and blue. So don't be fooled by this temporization of hostilities. They are just a tool. finish with the words with which I almost began. Arise like lions after, after slumber in unvanquishable number. Throw off your chains like Jew, which in sleep. Boris! Boris! Put on you! They, we are the many. They need to remember. They are only few. Down with the 1%. Brilliant information there. Knowledge is power. Um, what I'm going to do now, something that's very close to my heart. I appreciate people are getting cold. I just want to say, and, and this is genuine as well, genuine fair play to the police. Because you know what? They've conversed with me. And when I was speaking to the police yesterday, and quite rightly it is said, we are different in Manchester. We went unharassed last time. And listen, they're people just like us. Yes, like in any institution, the military, the police, the NHS, whatever, you're going to have a very, 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 very small, not even 1% that are the bully boys, that have a chip on the shoulder, that want to cause disruption. But the last time we all marched, and today, untouched, unmolested, left alone. So, listen, regardless, shut up. Why are you necking? All right, go away. Off you pop. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Who are you? Who are you? At the end of the day, we're no better than anybody else if we're calling hate on people that have done nothing but support us. No different. No different. They've supported us, they've been helpful with me, conversed with me back and forth, and here we are, spreading our truth, united, and they're stood there, showing an example to London and Liverpool, serving the people! So, everyone's getting a little bit cold now, so I'm gonna finish with something, and unlike our previous speakers that were amazing by the way I'm not going to say I'm going to finish them rattle on for 15 minutes please this is the last thing and it's my friend Jessica who's nervous as hell okay you will all give her a warm welcome I know she's going to sing for us when we've finished as part of the agreement as I respected with the police once we're done we'll go about our day do whatever we're going to do we've got our message
message out there. We will be gathering again. We will be bigger in numbers. And we are going to infiltrate government and select leaders who truly represent the people. Please give a round of welcome to Jess, who's going to sing for us. Thank you, everybody, for coming. This is just the start. Yeah. 
for smallpox. And when they made the vaccine for smallpox, that smallpox had receded considerably that the vaccine wasn't needed. But once they started vaccinating people, smallpox reached sky high. The vaccination had been responsible for adding more death, more death to people's lives. And some of you don't know this because you haven't read about it. What I read and what I research, pretext on pretext, I want you to know about it so that you cannot, so that you can be educated concerning it. And it's not just you hearing my word, my words, it's by you doing your part and finding out what it is that's going on in our lives. Here's the thing, how many of you know about the MRI vaccination? How many of you know about Pfizer and the BioNTech? How many of you know how long this mRNA vaccination was not fit for human trials? This is what I'm going to say to you. Check this out, check it out. It was not fit for human trials.
interruption right now what's going on is they're, um, they're splitting us apart, right? And we're not allowed to interact with each other. So I'm just trying to express love in the easiest way possible, which is hugging people. And at the same time, we're not allowed to do it, so it's a bit of a... to the man, do you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to encourage breaking rules with love. Finally, I don't agree with what our government's done or governments around the world, but I think the bigger problem is how we're divided from it, you know, like... I'm a big believer in free choice. So the people that want the vaccine, big up, big up. Take the vaccine, man. I really hope it makes you feel the way you want it to feel and you're healthy from it and you're good. The people that don't want it, respect, man. Trust your body, do what you need to do. But there's people in between telling each other what to do. You've got the, the anti-vaxxers telling people don't take the vaccine. You've got the vaccinators telling people to take it. It's two extremes. We're just creating another ism, do you know what I mean? We don't need it. It's another divide. And then we're going to be controlled easily, man. We're arguing about bullshit. I agree with most of what they said, to be honest. Like, I think that the message has been clear today. And it's simply, you know, the people that are in charge of us are not doing their jobs right. And I don't know if it's incompetence or if there's a plan, but the job's not being done right. They're not representing the people. This isn't what we want. They're ignoring the real problem, which is mental health, Cancers, other diseases, heart attacks, people not seeing the doctors when they need to. I know personally people that have died from cancer just because they ain't had the treatment, do you know what I mean? And I've got people telling me, oh, but I know someone that's died of COVID. Fair enough, but this problem is going to go away. And what we're going to be left with, you know, people have lost their jobs. These jobs ain't coming back, it looks like. Do you know what I mean? You've got people, mental health doesn't just go away in a year's time. Like, I've suffered from mental health and I still deal with it, do you know what I mean? But I'm in this place now, I'm powerful, but it's still there. These people are going to be dealing with that, what's happened this year, their whole lives probably. And it's been triggered from this people have killed themselves over it no one's talking about it no one do you know what i mean you, you turn on bbc news there's no there's no word of how suicide rates have doubled that was over summer when we had nice weather what do you think's going to happen now when people ain't going outside and it's raining and cold people are deading themselves man they ain't going to see a way, way out they haven't got community they've taken every support system away from the people so like if i'm feeling down i can't even go chill with my mates in the, in the pub do you know, that might be do you know what I mean? That might be my release from all the stress of the week. But they ain't got that. They might need to go to a restaurant. They might need to, whatever it is, see their family. We can't even see our families. But wait, the government have told us we can now over Christmas. Thank you so much. They're trying to program us, right? Yes. They're trying to but program us to understand that they are the bus. Okay. They are the bus. They've, they're creating this freedom pass. That if we get vaccinated, uh, if we get tested, sorry, uh, twice a week, we can. it gives us our normality back. They've called it freedom pass. They ain't called it virus free pass or like not sick pass they've called it freedom pass so you might read it and not realize what that means but the word freedom is important because they're saying to you here it is and what can they do they can take it away so they're telling you that they have the power but they don't have the power it's a god-given right freedom they can't take it from us and they can't give it to us but they're trying to train us that that's how it is they say the truth man like they say like what really are happening right now you know what like they want to control us they want to they want us to be like a donkeys, like only working, home, work, home, no life, no social. Uh, you know what I mean? Like they want us to be like uh, at home doing nothing, just working at home. You know what I mean? Like they don't want us to be free. Like that's the I think like that's the point about all of this. Like they don't want the people to be awake. They don't want people to be free like the, the free is dangerous for all the political people politicians and all the people who control who really control the society who really control the money here and who really control everything you know like they don't want us to be free and i think that that's the point that about all this pandemic you know like to be to be afraid about everything, to be afraid about go uh, to the street, to be afraid about go meeting your friends, to go afraid about go meeting your family, to not uh, make your family on uh, danger, you know? I, that's what I think right now. And I had to actually run from Spain because uh, Spain now is really fucked up the economy because like the politics that we have, are not actually the, the politics that we want. They just took the power from uh, and they stuck there, you know. And they are doing crazy stuff like on Spain right now. The people have uh, quarantine and and uh, have a time they have to be at home. Like they can you cannot be on the street after 10 p after 10 p.m. And the, if the police catch you, 
you get uh, I don't know how is it on English like uh, they give you a notice yeah, oh, yeah, yeah you know like you have to pay money and I don't accept that you know like uh, in Spain the people are not that awake that we are here you know like they are they still sleep they still not caring about what they say to them they still like doing everything like the politics say be at home at 10 all the people go and be at home at 10 you have actually in Spain you cannot uh, you have to wear the mask on the street yeah. you're not allowed to wear the, uh, to not have the mask on the street so if they catch you yeah they catch you they give you an notice too like uh, at the street at the shops uh, everywhere you have to wear the mask and the people doesn't matter you know like they say to them do that they do it they don't go to street to fight for the rights you know what I mean like they still so sleep on Spain, the people, and that's what I hate of, of Spain. I love it's the country that I grew up there. I am originally Moroccan, but I grew up on Spain, like all my life. But that's what I don't like from Spain, man. Like the people are asleep and they do whatever they say to them to do, and they don't care about nothing. Like they fall, they only follow the rules, they only follow the politics. Even if they know that it's not right, they follow it. See here, I come here, I see how the people really, like today, they fight for the rights, they they do or really what they want to do, like they don't accept the politics uh, rules. But, on, uh, and I saw that on France too, on France, uh, being there this summer, and the people are like here, they don't wear the mask on the street and that thing but on Spain we still so sleep man and we have to change that we have to change that and not only in Spain like all the world we have to awake to be um, free like we I said to you before you know like right now we are we are awakened we are we are trying to do it we are we are on the way you know what I mean like we are doing it right but we still have so many things to change the politics on Spain, they say like um, it is killing people, it is destroying people, but it's really not. Like on Spain, they say the hospitals are full, uh, we have no space on, at the hospitals, we have to make a, actually one week ago, two weeks ago, they made a new hospital, and now that hospital is hem it's empty, man. Like no one is there, they just made it with our money that we pay, like taxes and everything we paid for that hospital that it is empty now like you did you really not using it but you use it for scare the people like make the people think that we need the hospitals we need the places to cure the people but it's not true man it's not true everything fake like in spain we have some people like they they fight for the rights too and they saw like the hospitals are not that full they say to us they are empty like it's actually 3% of people, or 3% of 100, that people are really infected by coronavirus, you know what I mean? Like, it's not that much what they say to us, and the people trust it. The people are really trusting the politics on Spain, and that's, uh, that's a reason. But now they are destroying, actually, the economy on Spain. Like, we are have no work. Uh, actually, I've been there for two months, three months. That's not too much, but no, uh, no finding work, like with no work. And I meet people here now who are, uh, who are like I'm working now in a JD warehouse, and I meet people uh, who tell me, like old people, man, who had to leave his children, uh, his uh, house, his everything, you know, to come here to find a new work, a new life, you know, because there, uh, there was like one guy, he told me like, he was, it's a funny story, but sad at the same time he was there on Tenerife a part of Spain and he was one year with no work he was actually the last step uh, that he tried to do is uh, put tomatoes on a garden to make some money you know from somewhere and uh, he, uh, now he lived everything he's like 45 or something like that and he had to leave uh, left everything there to come here to to have a work actually only for have a work and Spain is really fucked up now, like they are fucking the economy and people are saying like it's gonna be a crisis more than the 2008 of Wall Street, Wall Street crisis and now Spain is coming more than that because the politics there, they are fuck it, fucking up the, the country and that's the one reason that I am here now.
because I want a future. And if in Spain I have no work, I have no nothing, I, I have to find it somewhere, you know. And here is a, a country that if, if you want to work, you're going to work because it's a world country, they have many works, you know. And I don't know what more to say. Like, if you want to ask me something. That's perfect. You said everything. I like mm, For the last three months, yeah. I've been going to, to all the major protests in London, okay? And I see the changes with the protesting and the police and the behavior. Me personally, my view is the protests are, are very peaceful, okay? From what I've seen, okay? If you police them, you antagonize people. For example, I've been to one in Chicago Square. There are about 50,000 people in Chicago Square. And the police them, they all line at the back, okay? And what they do, they storm the crowd so, so people can get rowdy and attack them back. So because we know the game, what we do, we sat down, right? And once they sat down, the police, them, they don't do anything because the cameras are watching. But they want us to attack us, you see, because they don't want this to be going on. But I've noticed the police behavior changed sometime. I was there last week in London, and I'm telling you, it was bad. Okay, the way police was doing to people, these are protesters, it's, it's bad, you know? It's, it's very bad, but when it comes to the virus, right? I'm gonna tell you what's going on, my friend, okay? You gotta believe in the Bible, okay? The Bible revelation, okay? I'm a, I'm a, my mom was a pastor, okay? So I'm from a religious background, okay? All this was written in the Bible. The Bible tells us there yeah, that this is gonna happen. They gotta do everything to stop, to make sure that we accept the vaccine. For example, no hotels, no hotels, no restaurant, no sports, no venues. They got, they got to do everything to force us. It's so simple. If we all say no, it's so simple. Because shops need us. Airline needs us, okay? For example, if the pilot says no, the staff says no, the no plane flying. All it takes here is for us to say no. We are the cog. We turn the wheel. If we just stop turning, just stop. That's all it is. If we just stop doing everything, everything comes back to normal. We can change, you know? We are the people. We are the power. It's about us to take control, take our lives back. Stop with the media. If you notice here, yeah, the media never put anything of hope on the television. It's always bad news. If you notice, the virus is only on the TV, not on the streets. If it wasn't for the TV screen, we wouldn't even know about Corona. It's only on TV, nowhere else. Because people everywhere living their lives. No one's dropping dead. No one's dying. You can't recover from it, my friend. But just believe in God, okay? Yeah. Well, basically, we've come together to express ourselves because we have the we have the freedom to movement, freedom to express, freedom of speech to do that. Um, there's a lot of protests have gone on in the lockdowns, uh, and nothing's happened. And the and the mainstream media hasn't covered it. With the other protests, the mainstream media has covered it. And I think the mainstream media is very biased. So we ourselves need to come out and share the knowledge with people. Go online, stream, post videos, pictures, and let the let the masses of the public know that we are standing up for our freedoms. I'm not against vaccines, I'm not for vaccines. It's your own individual choice as a human being, as a being, a man or a woman. Uh, as a, obviously, if you're not old enough, then you should have consent. But I will not be taking the vaccine because it's not been tested and we are literally going to be the guinea pigs of the vaccine. And we do not know the effects. It, it will, the government doesn't know the effects. So if the government doesn't know the effects, how are we going to take something we don't know if it will harm us or if it will help us? It just doesn't make sense to me. That's my personal opinion. But normally it takes an average between 10 to 15 years to develop a vaccine. Everyone knows that. Uh, the influenza vaccine has been around for 78 years. Still, people still get the flu and die. That answers your question. I think the government lies and the data, uh, they fabricated uh, a lot of the data. So basically they said there was going to be 4,000 deaths and that death rate was only like 220 and you can go and see this evidence for yourself on the government website. So a lot of the stuff that the uh, scientific advisors, the so-called uh, advisors are giving, they're totally false. The numbers are over-exaggerated, like times a thousand. Yeah, we're getting the momentum now. Obviously they brought in the lockdown and this is what Manchester's about, do you know what I mean? Look at this, everyone getting around, coming together, playing music. We all peace, love, unity. We need the police on our side. We can't be abusive to him. Uh, we need to be peaceful. We need to be respectful. And we need to love our police because at the end of the day, they are doing their job. But we cannot be violent towards them or tell them to choose a side. I disagree with that. And us coming together as a unity and as one, we can do, we can make a big change.
for those who don't agree with the anti-lockdown just because of their they maybe have had families going to um, that had coronavirus and stuff like that what would you say to them well I can actually tell you what it feels like because my father was put into a care home and he died on the 15th of April oh, so sorry. I know exactly what it feels like and I know exactly what it feels like to lose my own father uh, and it didn't stop me coming out here guys because I understand there are differences in opinions within science within beliefs within in knowledge wisdom um, and my my experience in my with myself of my body night 2016 I was told I had six months to live but I worked out that autoimmune disease is, is doesn't is not real the body has never attacked itself and I did that with myself of myself and experimented on my own body and I turned Western medicine my doctors and endocrinologists on their head that turned a page for me that turned me into the terrain theory not the germ contagion theory that we're all bought into which sells pharmaceutical petrochemical pharmaceutical tablets and medicines which come from the oil magnates which is the world you're living in right now because if you live in that world then you're going to lock yourself down you're going to wear a mask you're going to stay away from other people you're going to keep six feet and you're going to comply to all these draconian measures but if you understand the terrain theory which pretty much answers 90 percent of how humans can uh, get diseases and how people get ill and become diseased. When you understand that, or you have an experience like mine, which is a traumatic experience of my body, it opens your eyes, it opens your mind, and it opens the way that you look and you, you decipher things, you dissect things in such a way. And you take, you'll take your time, because obviously I was personally affected. And obviously moving forward to, the, to uh, uh, April this year, when my father was moved into a care home. Take care guys, see you later. Um, he was basically, he was dying anyway, so it's not that not a case that he wasn't ill he was however by locking him in a room isolating him taking him off with all his medication putting his body into cold turkey and isolating an individual and leaving him alone for hours and hours at a time that basically accelerated the process of him dying and in one way i'm actually quite happy because he died quicker because he was dying a slow painful death however if, he, if, that, if that wasn't the case, which I'm sure it hasn't been for a lot of other people's uh, loved ones, parents, aunties, uncles, etc., grandmas, grandpas, they've killed them with these directives by locking them down in these care homes. They've killed them by, by taking away their medication, by over-medicating them with other things like vaccines. This, this world you we live in, guys, it's a spell. You're, it's like under a spell, you're under a veil of this, this oppression and tyranny. Um, but obviously, I'm talking from a perspective where I've experienced lots of, of lots of hard things, trauma and stuff. So I've managed to bounce back with that in a successful way. So that gives me a perspective that other people will find it hard to grasp because I've lived through it. I've not read books on it. I've lived through it. Uh, an experience over reading a book, it's, it's you know, it's tenfold better. It's a it's hundred times different. Um, so those people that are locked down, um, the, the only thing I can say is great. You have a belief, and I understand that you feel that you're doing the best for people around you, and you feel that you're doing the right thing. But understand, you're being told what to do. Understand that you do have autonomy. You have a leader inside of you. You can choose to take information, dissect it, and then look at counter evidence, counter information, investigate other things, not just science, and not just the science you're spoon fed. Start looking at all of things, like the germ contagion theory against the terrain theory. Look at how the terrain theory was brought in. It was understood way before Louis Pasteur brought in. And then the petrochemicals came in afterwards. And of course, that sells medication and vaccines. The terrain theory doesn't sell anything. It actually helps people get back to homeostasis. Eat natural seasonal food, forage. Start looking after yourself. Understand the body's way of dealing with um, bacterium and, and different types of illnesses and, and balances. And, you know, it's, there's just so much out there, guys. And, and history is being hidden from us. Uh, and that, that of itself... Is, is the psyops, the psychological operation that's been, been uh, permeated through television and media, the lamestream media, the internet, you know, shadow banning on places like social media sites and uh, digital book burning. This goes on and on, guys, and it's an asymmetrical war, an asymmetrical attack on you. You're being attacked mentally, physically, psychologically, emotionally. You're being told what you can and can't do with your body. You're being attacked by your food, by medicine, by, if you believe in chemtrails in the sky, pesticides, herbicides on food, genetically modified F1 seeds and plants. You're being attacked internally, externally. An attack from your friends, your family, your neighbours, your loved ones, your work colleagues. Attack from education, from money, from finance. Your children are being attacked from, from schools, doctors, nurses. All this stuff is being told to you from down these different directive of information from, from people to people that pass you information. And it's a constant attack on you. But when you realise that all these avenues are just cofactors of a way to try and control you and keep you in an essence uh, a slightly elevated, uh, raised level of fear or adrenalised fear, which actually ruins your immune system. 
But when you realize that, you can actually sink back down into a relaxed state of calm, uh, you know, a harmonious state, a homeostasis, if you like to call it. And then you can actually start looking at things from a place of calm, relaxed, you know, um, internal, I suppose, internal balance. Um, and then you can actually start accepting information and rejecting information. But if you're in an elevated form of stress, it's very hard to take anything in. And what you end up doing is just feeding on more and more stress. It's kind of addictive. It's like an opioid. It's like a, it's like a heroin. You kind of, it's like a fruit machine. You just want to keep clicking mm. the button, keep watching the television. People can't turn the TV off. They can't turn the news off. It's an addiction, guys. And, and they know that. These guys have been studying you. Hence why I say it's a psyops. They've been studying you for hundreds of years. And they know how you work now. They know how you think collectively, not everyone, but the mass, like the shoal of the fish. And they're trying to control the shoal of the fish. But all you need to do, guys, is just become your own leader of the fish, like your own, you know, your own seagull and whatever it is, flying south for the winter. Just take a different path. Become your own person, your own sovereign being. Um, and but it, it's, it's it's not a light switch, guys. It might feel like a light switch, but it's a gradual thing, like nature. You know, we we change naturally and slowly. When you hear information that contradicts something that you've you've been brought up with, cognitive dissonance. That that in itself. It's like cutting off your own arm. If you have a belief that's, that's deep and core inside you, but it was never yours in the first place, it was given to you. Trying to take that information out, knowing that you've got some information that contradicts it, which actually feels and sits with you 100% better. It is like cutting off your own arm because trying to remove that negative belief that's been implanted in you, it's, it's terrible. And this is why people were called tin, hat, tin full hat wearers because people literally went through a phase of abyss where they're going nuts because they start questioning all the things that were given to them when they were kids, up until secondary school, into university, into work, and they start questioning everything. And it does cause a massive psychological, it can for some people cause a massive psychological effect, which actually can cause a big unbalance mentally and emotionally for a while. And I went through some of that myself, but now I'm much more calmer. And I, I have a, a much more um, balance, I, I feel from comparing myself to myself, that is, not to anyone else, a much more balanced perspective now. And I can look at situations, be it, be it aggressive, in, in, you know, violent, be it intense, uh, and be it overwhelming with information and facts. I, I, I give myself space and time now to be able to deal with that. And it might only be a short amount of time, but I allow myself to assess it and make rational decisions and intuitive decisions as well, based on the information that's around me, the situation that's around me. So I, I run with Stand Up X, Stand Up X United. I do things outside of London. Outside of so London. So Stand Up X predominantly started in London. Okay. That's that with their main bag. Um, on the 29th of August was the big, big one in August. Yeah. Um, and when I was stood where the stage was, yeah. I looked around and, and I, I was calculating. So I, I, there was the first meeting was 25 people. Then it went to like 30 people. And I was with the Clapham Common 30. And then we went up to like 60 people, 40 people, then 60 people, then 110, then Parliament Square, we did 120. And that was amazing. Like 120 people, I mean, yeah. they even like look at today. Yeah. And I, but back then it was London, Parliament Square. Mm. Then the next time we had 600. Yeah. And we marched Oxford Street. Then we did 600 again. Oxford Street, Regent Street, marched to the Downing Street, marched to the BBC building. Next time, 30,000. So the exponential curve hit. And I'm stood there looking at this number and I just had this feeling, like, it's like a knowing. We've already won this yeah. because the numbers are just, and, and the police, the government did not have a clue that that number would, would amass mm. on London. It would descend on London like it did. Yeah. 600, no more than three weeks before. Then 30 odd thousand, mm. they, they had no way of controlling it. Mm. But that was a big fingers up to them. That, that's what they felt it was. It wasn't, it was just people showing their sovereignty and showing their individual choice and freedom of movement, freedom of speech. But what it did, it embarrassed them. So the next time they had it in Trafalgar Square, what happened? People got smashed over the head with batons. Mm. What happened the next time? People got smashed over the head with batons again. Mm. Because the police had to make a statement. Well, not the police so much. The police were just the end of the whip. It was the, it was the whip handlers that were obviously throwing the directors. And at that point, I realized that London needed to, to, be, to be moved out of, in a sense, yeah. and started building the bigger cities up north. And that's been, been August. That's been my sort of my passion now. So since I've been doing it before August, by the way, but yeah. I've been traveling around to usually two cities every weekend. But since August, I've been really, really putting all my eggs in, I say eggs in one basket, putting all my passion and energy into driving up north and to towns and cities out of London and working with people uh, and sharing my experience, really, and, and offering advice if it's asked for uh, and helping people become more efficient and galvanizing their protest. Um, and just and keeping it peaceful, keeping it real and, and making sure that, you know, it it works for each each sort of place like a recipe being a chef turn up with all the ingredients what do your people want to eat you know and you just put it into the mix and if people like it they come back for more if they don't then you need to obviously change the recipe it's it's quite simple guys just work with analogies you know work with stories
Manchester last month here. Ruppley did a live, it's over three and a half hours, live uh, video feed, yeah. okay, live footage. Mm. And they did the march with us, they yeah. filmed everything. About two days later, they released their little one and a half minute video under Ruppley, okay, on, on YouTube, you can find it. Um, the first minute is just police officers lining up, then there's about 15 seconds of the police officers slamming people, throwing, arresting them. And then they handpicked one individual. I'm not even sure if the guy was part of the protest. Yeah. Um, I'm going to describe him in a, in a comical way. And I don't mean if the guy hears this, I don't mean to be like down on him. But he had teeth like Stonehenge. He had like literally braided. And he was very unkempt, very unwashed. And once again, this, I'm not putting, but it was just the way that they portrayed this one individual. And they gave him about 12, 12, 13 seconds of talk time. Uh, and they purposely picked the bits where he was stuttering and he was umming and ahhing. And that was it. That was the only person they picked out of three and a half hours, guys. You had all the speakers. You had a social worker talking. You had poor boys talking. You had other people. You had, you had, you had people talking height of, of experiences and very powerful information. They didn't touch any of that. They just did one minute of police arrest. One, uh, sorry, one minute of police arrest. Then a little bit of violence and, and toing and throwing from the public. Then that one guy mm. out of three and a half hours. So that in itself tells me tell, that that's my analogy of how the media will cover us. We had three and a half hours of peaceful protest, guys. The, the 500 people stayed at Piccadilly Gardens afterwards, and it was then when the police descended on us, and they descended on the people and started smashing things up and throwing people around. That's at the end, and we had gone pretty much 90% of people had gone home. Yeah. So that's the media for you. They handpick the bit that gets the attention and pumps the fear, pumps the adrenaline, and also people that are thinking about coming to the protest will watch that and go oh I'm not yeah. gonna come now yeah. because I'm gonna get slammed and get arrested that's not the case guys it's not the case you know and the Birmingham yesterday and Manchester day has proven the police are doing their job now they're acting under common law they're not interfering with people because we're not breaking smashing any possessions or buildings we're not hurting any living vessels we're not killing any living vessels be it animals or humans so therefore we're not breaking any laws so we're being left alone so we're marching, protesting freely, speaking freely, and then going home and having a great day. And it's a success, guys. It's a success. And this is the st this is just the start of a new start, you know. And it's a, it's a beautiful beginning of, of part of all the protests that we've done. Uh, and it's it's amazing, guys. It's amazing to be part of it, and amazing to be helping to write history uh, in the making.